Hello, assalamu alaikum. Um, I'm going to give it a couple of minutes and then I'm going to get started. So I'm going to be talking about three ways in which we subconsciously self-sabotage um, as entrepreneurs. Okay, And I think it's really important that I talk about this because I see a lot of um, behaviours that are happening that we're doing on a subconscious level or maybe we're even aware of it but we don't realise how detrimental it is in getting to the success that we want to get to, okay? So three ways in which we self-sabotage, okay? If you guys can... Um, Salam sis, Ms. Ba, are you okay? I'm going to be talking about ways that we self-sabotage. Um, I hope that this helps you guys. Um, okay, let's get started. Okay, so step number one, we self-sabotage because... We care more about what others think than we do about ourselves, okay? So I see at the beginning and even during um, the entrepreneurial journey when I'm coaching is that we're sat here and the first thing, whether we're doing it consciously or subconsciously, is we're worried about what others are thinking. Think about just a Facebook Live, okay? We can put on the camera and we can talk about something that we're passionate about and then what will happen? We start thinking, oh, do I look okay? What will the other person perceive me to be? Will I say something right? Won't I say something right? Do I have enough knowledge? And the questions go on and on and on. And a lot of the times people ask it as an internal thing. So they'll say, oh, I'm not sure if I'm good enough, okay? Or I'm not sure if I have the skills. So I say, so if you don't have the skills, what will happen? And when we get deeper and deeper, I realize that a lot of it is to do with the perception that somebody's going to have of us. Okay, so number one is that we are looking, and I've written it down here, so if I keep looking down, it's just because it helps me. So number one is that we're looking outward instead of inward, okay? We're looking at the approval of others before ourselves. Now, the thing is, whatever we do in whatever industry, okay, whether that's coaching, whether that's, you know, photography that I do, whether that's on the, um, the physical product space okay wherever it might be you're going to have people who are going to look at you that's just going to be inevitable and sometimes we're afraid of what our families are going to think we go to do something and instead of worrying about how we're going to experience that we're thinking about how my dad will perceive that how my mum will perceive that how my neighbors will perceive that how my colleagues will perceive that and we live in this kind of space that's tight and we go into it thinking okay I can't do this because I might not wear the right clothes or I might not say the right things. And so one of the ways we self-sabotage is by looking at um, others and caring what others think more than what we need to do. Okay, so first thing, first of all, is getting your why right. Okay, so one of the ways to combat this is to make sure that you know what your why is. Only you know your journey. Only you know your reasons for doing things. Uh, sorry, my little girl. Only you know why you came onto this journey. And only you know where you want to get to. Looking at what others think of you, looking at how others will judge you, will only deter you from getting there, okay? You have to be almost tunnel visioned. You have to say, this is my dream. This is what I want to do. And yes, some people are going to approve. Some people aren't going to approve. But that shouldn't matter. Your why should be so big and the reason for you doing it should be so great that nothing can get in the way. I'll give you my example. I'm a single mom and I had two kids. No, I'm a dog. Uh, no, don't, don't. It's night time. Um, I have two daughters, okay? And I come from a Muslim background. So one of the stigmas is about getting divorced. I was in a very, very abusive relationship and they didn't want me to leave, okay? They didn't want me to leave. But I knew, I knew once those girls were born that I would have to leave. There was no other way. I didn't care about the judgment. Before that, there was always this kind of, should I stay, shouldn't I stay? But once the girls were born, I knew that I couldn't have them go through another cycle. And that was my why. That was my reason for not going back. And even though everybody around me, I got the stigma, I got the name calling, I got told I'd never get married again, um, it's the shame on, on the family, so many, so many things. And if I had stayed, I would not have fulfilled my why. I could not have done what I needed to do for my girls. So that's number one. Don't look at other people. You start it because you want to do something. How many times have you been conditioned, conditioned by society, conditioned by schooling, to tell you, yes, become a doctor because that's the best career to do. It gives you social status. But you hate it. You hate doing it. 
No, Mama, we can't open the door. Right, go ahead. It's from the next time. I know, no, don't open the door. It's night time. Um, sorry, guys. So that's number one, not looking at others. Number two, we give up too soon, okay? And this one, I get all of you can, can relate to this. We give up way too soon. We, th we have this idea that we've got the idea, and then overnight, somehow, you know, we're looking at people. I have this syndrome. Don't, I'm not judging, I know, okay? Where we look at somebody who's 20 years, 30 years ahead of us, and we're thinking, damn, like, they can do this so good, I can't, I'm nowhere near, I'm nowhere near. And so we, we, we start something and we don't see the results like that and we give up, we give up. But, but what I want to say for that one is the, the sweetness is in the journey, okay? The sweetness is in the learning and the growing, okay? I was reading this book and you guys can get it, it's called The Happiness Equation. It's an amazing book and in that book he's, he explores lots of different people who have been successful, he himself has been successful, and in the end, he finds that the most, the most happiest people are the ones that enjoy the process. That's what success is about. Because if we stopped, if we stopped and we just didn't have anything else to do and we reached it, we'd only want another goal. And you know what came up for me today was something really interesting. When a, a parent is going to have a baby, they're so excited. Those nine months were probably the best months of my life. The baby wasn't here, but the, the idea of that baby being born, the, the imagination and the what I'm going to do and, and the different stages that was going to come for my pregnancy, that for me was so amazing. I know other mothers can relate to this. It's the, it's the, the coming of that thing. Because once you've got it, you'll want to go into a new, new goal. So this idea of giving up too soon, you'll only give up too soon if you don't enjoy the process. Okay, so you have to go back to your why again. Like, am I doing this because I'm going to achieve something that's of a higher um, achievement for me? Like, am I going to have satisfaction from it? Am I going to be able to help people with it? You know, is this something I'm going to enjoy? Because if those things aren't there, if your why isn't there, your purpose for doing it isn't strong enough, then even the process, you'll give up, you'll give up because 90% do. They do, they just think, you know, I've tried this and I've tried that and it's not working. Part of it is the way that they're trying because we're just going, going, going rather than thinking, right, I'm going to do this and I'm going to enjoy the process as I go along and I love the fact that I can learn. Learning is a big part of us as human beings. The whole thing is about how we grow, what we become in the process. Because once we get to the next stage, we'll grow again. There'll be no end to it. So we think, oh, we're only at this stage and I can't possibly do anything. But then you get to the next stage, you get to the next stage and then you grow again. It's just more and more and more. And we need that. We need that. Imagine how bored you would be if, Allah forbid, you ended up in hospital and, and everybody ever stayed in hospital. I know I had to stay sometimes for about a week. It's the longest week of your life. Like, you just go out of your mind thinking, I want to do something. And as entrepreneurs, you come into it because you have that kind of mindset. You know, the creativity, the wanting to better yourself, the wanting to help people, the unknown, the challenges. That's what we thrive on. If we, don't, if we don't love that part of it, then entrepreneurship isn't for us. We can do a job. I'm not, going, I'm not looking down at people who have jobs. If you're satisfied in your job, that's great. But for entrepreneurs who choose the, this road, it's so important that we enjoy the process. So number two was about giving up and giving up too soon. Okay? And number three was we want perfection. Okay? We want perfection. And I see this a lot. So what happens is people self-sabotage because this, they go into it thinking, okay, I'm going to do... And they pick on the wrong things to do as well. I see this a lot. So somebody has a new idea. And the first thing they concentrate on is on their logo. Okay? What colour is it going to be? What size is it going to be? How is it going to look? And although logos are great and branding is great, um, and I get that, but think about the 80-20 rule. If you're going to be a coach... What's the most important things that you need to be doing? Is it really a logo? Is somebody going to be able to look at my logo and say, hey, you know, the logo is great, so therefore I'll get this coach? Absolutely not. What, where we should be doing the work is becoming the best versions of ourselves. So when we get a client, if you're doing a mindset, then you should be working on your mindset. If you're doing health coaching, then your health should be an optimum as it can be so that you can help that person. You know, so you are bringing up the skills that you need in reflection of your clients. But if you're not there, believe it or not, it'll show through. 
you will start doing it and over a period of time the, the leaks will be there and people will sense that um, and I'm going to be really honest with you I had a, a, a great like she's a friend I would consider her a friend and she's somebody on the online space that I respect and last year last year she came to to me for some uh, some coaching and um, I wasn't ready and she wanted to sign up and I said to her no I can't do it right now because I knew I wasn't ready we spoke again a couple of days ago and it's like she goes it's like a completely different person and I said I know I know because I'm different I've grown into what I needed to be I've worked on the mindset bits that I need to do to help these ladies and she could see that and so that's what I'm saying to you people will know if you are competent and you are strong and you are working every single day towards what you need to be that will help you much more than a logo can or you know some branding can yes branding is important of course but more than that it's about knowing who you are who you're going to serve and and doing it just just go in and do it because what i think what happens is i think we subconsciously this is what happens i think subconsciously people concentrate on those things rather than concentrate on what they need to do because there's some sort of block there there's something that they're afraid of so they continue to work on the lesser things rather than the things that they need to work on. So, and perfection, this is another one. I am uh, terrible for this, absolutely terrible. When I was in school, if I didn't get the A star, it just wasn't good enough. Like, if I didn't get A star, then I was a failure. And I grew up in a family that, you know, everything had to be perfect. The dinner had to be on table at one o'clock, and if it was five minutes late, we were in trouble. And everything had to be done. We had to be in bed for nine o'clock, we had to do certain things at certain times and if it wasn't done then you were a failure so i had this mindset of if i'm not perfect at something then i'm some sort of failure and i haven't done right and you know this is the worst trait you can have as an entrepreneur because there is no such thing as perfection you can only get better and you can only get better by the version of you that was yesterday so one of the things i advise for this is look back Look back at what you've achieved, look at your patterns as well, see if you are a perfectionist. Because a lot of the times you don't need perfection. You just need to be in the road of progression. And as long as you're progressing, and as long as you have done better than you were yesterday, that is enough. That is enough. Because if who are you challenging? The only person you're challenging is, is yourself. It's not it's not the other person who's got something similar to you, it's not your neighbours, it's not your siblings, it's nobody. If you really think about it, the only person you have to be better than from yesterday is yourself. And as long as you're working towards that, then there should be no element of this perfection. You know, this idea of, oh, okay, for me to start something, I need to know this, this and this. Because I think what, pe what people do is they decide that they want to do something. And then they think, I need, to I need another course. I need another this, I need another that, and it's all the external tools. So part of my coaching and my philosophy is that the main work is always within you. All the answers come from within. Even if you are looking for things outward, even if you are looking for tools and things, you have to look within yourself and say, okay, why am I needing this? Why am I looking at that? Why am I seeking out a, per a particular thing? And once you've got to that place where you're, you're clear on what you're doing, then action is so important. So for this one where it's perfection, what I would say is take action. Take action on the things that you're comfortable with and progress yourself every single day so that you don't get stuck. You don't get stuck on that perfection mode. Okay, let me just have a look at the questions, guys. Because I know a couple of people put some things down. Salam alaikum to everybody that says salams to me. Uh, Ms. McCann says, love you. Love you too, sis. Karima is saying, awesome. Ms. was saying, oh yeah, so you can, you, so true, so you can walk the walk before you expect our clients to follow through. Yeah, so it's not that we have to be these perfect coaches, okay? This is not what I'm saying. Because we're human beings, we're always learning. But what I'm saying is that that perfection on the internal side shouldn't stop you from doing things. If you know that you're at a certain level, then work at that level and build yourself up but not in a way that it's self-sabotaging, not in the way that, oh, okay, I have to be this particular way and in, you know, exactly this long and this short and, and all the rest of it. And then you're like, okay, 
I, I can't move on because I haven't got my logo perfect. I haven't got my website perfect. I haven't got this perfect. I think more than anything, it's just about knowing where your priorities are, knowing what parts you need to grow and what parts are not so important. The 80-20 rule is a great example of that. Finding somebody who understands systems, who's been there before, done it, is really key. And look for people who are ahead of you, you know, people who are in your industry or, you know, similar to you and, and, and aligns with your values. And then if you can find somebody like that, they will then show you much quicker than you could have done it alone. Much, much quicker. And I can attest to that. When I've had like mentors, some things that they put in, some things that they've just said to me has just like made me just, okay, that's it. That's all I needed. Just a little drop of something. And I was there. I was on the tipping point. I just needed somebody to give me some confidence or just a bit of belief in me. And once you find those people and you're in alignment with those, go with those people. But it shouldn't be about this idea that I have to be perfect. I have to get this A star. Otherwise, I'm not good enough. That is self-sabotage you know internally you're going to do that and then your clients are going to pick up and then think about working with a client you know do you want clients who want who are making progress or do you want clients who want perfection and then when you come to do your job you're going to be rubbish at it because you can't get perfection from anybody we're all work in progress you know so those are my three things. Number one was that we um, care more about what others think than ourselves. Number two was that we give up too soon. And number three is that we want perfection. So those are my three tips for today. Um, any ladies, if you want to join the Growth Junkies, we have lots of um, live talks in there. I'm trying to get some of the ladies. If you're not confident with doing Facebook Lives, you can practice in the group. And then hopefully like, build your confidence up and go on to do your own things. So thank you very much for tonight. I will see you guys soon. Assalamu alaikum.